So the starting point for metabolic scaling is to think about how the metabolic rate is related to mass. So the mass here is the mass of some organism, and we want to know is the relationship between the organism's mass and its metabolic rate. And as we've seen, Kleiber's law, this was the version from the previous video that I scribbled on, says that there is indeed um, a nice scaling relationship. So let's think about um, what we might expect that relationship to be, some different ways of um, predicting what this might be. So first, uh, a little bit, uh, let me say a little bit more about what I mean by metabolic rate and fix some notation. So metabolic rate is usually denoted by a capital Y. And that's an energy per time. So this says, how much energy does the creature expend, or how much energy does it need to consume, how much food does it need to eat uh, per day, or per minute, or per hour, or whatever, in order to just uh, survive. So the metabolic rate here is usually taken to be the uh, basal metabolic rate. So just your resting uh, metabolism is how I think about it. Energy per time, I think about this as just how much do you need to eat per day. Um, that would give calories per day. More often though, energy per time in the SI system is watts. So often on plots, uh, the, the units for metabolic rate, you'll, you'll notice are watts. Then mass is abbreviated or denoted capital M. And those units are usually kilograms. So we want to know how is metabolic rate related to the mass. And we've seen <coughs> that there is uh, a straight line on a log log plot. And so we suspect there's a scaling relationship, which here would take uh, this form. And the question for us is, what is this exponent? What are some possible candidate exponents? So um, let me first present uh, a couple ways, reasonably logical ways of, of thinking about this that would lead to an exponent x, um, but they turn out to be wrong. All right, so uh, the first idea is just that y and m are proportional. So this idea is appealing. It, it certainly makes sense. If you're more massive, you definitely need to eat more food um, in order to stay alive, to, in order to do your thing. Um, you know, the more massive you are, the more stuff you have, the more cells you have. And cells need um, oxygen and food to survive, to do the things that cells do that make you into you. So this seems like a reasonable guess. Um, it's clear it turns out to be wrong. And we can see that empirically. <coughs> the slope definitely is not 1. But there's another way to think about this a little bit more physically or biophysically. So uh, when you eat something, the energy that you consume, uh, almost all of it ends up as heat. And so the organism has to do something with that heat, has to, um, has, has, to, um, has to get rid of that heat. And so um, if y and m scale together, as organisms got larger and larger and larger, they'll have real problems getting rid of this heat. Um, so instead, a logical thought might be that the relationship between y and m is not this simple, but is related to, or the sort of limiting factor for me metabolism is not how much stuff you have, but how fast you can get rid of heat so you don't catch on fire or melt. So I'll explain that idea in the next video.